Now, corruption has remained a headache for successive governments. President William Ruto's administration has the fight against graft among its most important to-do list. According to statistics by Transparency International, Kenya was ranked 123 in the Corruption Perception Index. A third of Kenya's revenues have been lost to graft over the last two decades. Well, President William Ruto time and again has stated that no money shall be stolen in his government. But the irony is, corruption scandals are rife in his government. NTV's Melita Oletenges takes a look at the burden of graft in 2023, the EACC's pursuit of prosecutorial powers, and the overlap between the investigative agencies. To give you my commitment, I will clean up Kenza. Whatever it takes, Mr. President, whatever it costs, I will clean it up. Related to that. The president's stance and firm hand in dealing with corruption and corrupt individuals may have been felt after former health PS Josephine Buru was axed following the 3.7 billion anti mosquito net scandal at the Kenya Medical Supplies Authority, Kemsa. The recurring disease at Kemsa was actually again rearing its head. Uh, he fired the board. A board that he himself had actually appointed. Immediately it appeared like they weren't working the right way. He fired them, uh, transferred uh, the PS, uh, and that is the first time we see a PS uh, transferred, and then of course we see one uh, uh, resigning. So on that, the move, uh, his approach to fighting corruption, especially where administrative action can be taken, he's been swift. This uh, appears fastest than uh, PS has ever been fired. So there is a mixed bag. And of course, there are the stories that are coming out that are yet to have um, certain people who are culpable, people who can be mentioned as the, the, the perpetrators of this corruption. So it's a mixed bag, but in terms of perception, they're not doing well. The edible oil scam which hit headlines with 30 billion shillings taxpayers' money believed to have been looted according to EACC is one of the biggest scandals under the Kenya Kwanzaa government. The Kenya National Trading Corporation at the center of the scandal. The fact that the ESEC is investigating, the fact that the DCI is investigating, is a sure sign that our country is not at the place where the president or the leadership is stopping investigations. What happens at the judiciary is a different matter, but at least we have a space where we've seen uh, the, the budget controller speaking uh, openly about corruption. The more we allow the anti-corruption agencies or institutions we put in place to work out, the more we allow them room to work on their own, the more they do their work. Uh, we've seen governors being invited for, uh, for, for investigations, for interviews by ESEC. We've seen the DCI also do the same, completely without political interference. That is a country under the rule of law. The Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, which often finds itself on the receiving end for not unearthing some of these corruption cases, insists it's not moribund and that their approach is critical to gather enough evidence and not to rush the cases. People do sit, plan, and sometimes they do against professionals. Sometimes uh, the planning starts uh, even at the budgeting level. So if people take so long and such a uh, high level of skill to plan corruption, it means that even unraveling what has happened will also take time. People deploy uh, experts to plan corruption knowing very well that ESCC and other agencies will come. So they begin by uh, blocking uh, you know, those avenues that uh, investigators will follow when seeking to know what happened. So that explains why these uh, uh, complex corruption cases appear to take long. But the ESEC has uh, gone ahead of them by ensuring that, first of all, we have uh, highly skilled investigators. But netting corrupt individuals in some instances has brought about an overlap in the investigation's mandate that falls under ESCC and the criminal investigations under the DCI. That confusion is something that can be dealt with uh, in terms of uh, illegally so that it is made clear that, say, economic crimes, corruption, ethics, integrity issues will be dealt with 
by the ESCC. So that when that happens and somebody says it is ESC, there is no doubt that indeed it is. Different high-profile graft cases, however, have since been dropped since President William Ruto assumed office. Among high-profile persons whose cases were dropped is Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa, Cabinet Secretary Aisha Jumwa, and former Kenya Power Managing Director Ben Chumo. While prosecution of corruption suspects is the mandate of the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, ESCC is seeking to be granted prosecutorial powers to fast-track cases. When we forward these cases, we don't know the workload these people have, we don't know the capacity that they have, we don't know uh, the situation that they are in, the resources that they need. So for us, we would uh, really appreciate if the next stage also moved with speed uh, with our cases. But if you were to go there, you may find that they too are struggling with particular issues. While questions abound on whether ESCC is blowing hot and cold on fighting corruption or dancing to the piper, ESCC, on the other hand, insists it is relentless in the fight against graft, regardless of the status of the suspects. The challenge of corruption in the counties remains, and uh, ESCC continues to devise ways of ensuring that we remain ahead of those who are hell-bent on harvesting where they have not sown. The litmus test for President William Ruto going forward is how he shall deal with close allies implicated in different corruption scandals in his government, some of whom are considered untouchable, even by the top brass. Melita, all letting us, NTV. All right.